singing to it. And my voice singing aloud. I bless, bless your name with all of my heart. Come on, sing it to him. With my hands lifted unto you and my voice singing aloud. I bless, bless your name with all of my heart. I adore you, I adore your name. Precious Lord, 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 with my hands, with my hands lifted unto you, and my voice singing aloud. I bless, bless your name with all of my heart. Come on, sing it to him, church. With my hands lifted unto you and my voice singing aloud. I bless, bless your name with all of my heart. I adore you, I adore your name. Precious Lord, I adore your name. Precious Lord, I adore your name. Precious Lord, I adore your name. Join Pastor Sean Pinner in Freeport, Bahamas for healing and miracle breaking service at the BUT Hall on October 21st at 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. And we know that all things it will work together for good. Come and experience anointed worship, powerful preaching, and witness the power of God in action as the sick are healed, souls are saved, and lives are transformed. See you there. Good morning and welcome to another morning prayer broadcast. Uh, I am Jeffrey Zimmerman, of course, uh, once again with you all. Uh, many of you uh, know me uh, by now. I am uh, filling in for Pastor Sean today once again and uh, very honored and privileged to do so. I'm so happy to have known Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy for so long so many years and uh, and to be with them in ministry it's a great honor and privilege it's not something I take lightly and uh, it really is an honor to be here on this platform again today with all of you the people of God precious people and we are so grateful for all of you and we're grateful that you're here once again today uh, before we get started, Melanie and I, my wife Melanie and I, would like to join our faith with all of you and just uh, pray. So let's pray. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray for all of your people today. I cover every person in the blood of Jesus. Lord, let every person under the sound of my voice hear what the Holy Ghost is saying to the church and let it be so simple that even a child can understand what you are saying. Touch each of them where they are. Encourage them. Lift them up. Strengthen them. Give them hope. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. So we are continuing in the series, The Miracles of Jesus, and today's title is Sin Has Got to Go. Sin Has Got to Go. Now this is not a popular topic, but this is something that uh, needs to be talked about. You know, 
Nothing will hinder the move of God in your life faster than sin. You know, and uh, any, any, any sin that's in our lives, you know, God holds us to very high standards, you know, and he expects a lot of us, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. Uh, we here at Sean Pinder Ministries, we are held to a very high standard, you know. God holds us to a very high standard. He expects a lot of us. And so, you know, uh, uh, sin, whenever the Holy Ghost confronts you with it, it's got to go. Let's look at John chapter 5, starting with verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem, by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. So now this is uh, what is known as the pool of Bethesda. And this pool has these five porches and all these sick people are gathered around this pool. Now some of these people are blind. Some of them uh, are paralyzed, you know. Some of them uh, uh, are crippled or in some other way they're sick. So every, every now and again an angel would trouble the waters of the pool and then everyone would have to try to, to, to get in to the pool and be the first one in and whoever was the first one in was healed of whatever problem he had but uh, that was no easy task for people who you know are blind or you can't walk whatever like that it's not it's not an easy thing for you to just up and get in that pool verse 5 says there was a certain man there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years 38 years this man had this infirmity that is a long time to be sick you know when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case he said unto him wilt thou be made whole would you like to be healed the impotent man answered him sir I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Now you can't blame this guy for being just a little bit discouraged. I mean, he's had this problem for 38 years, you know. And every time the water gets stirred up, somebody gets in there before him. You see? So he's really got a problem. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Now, this was amazing. 38 years this man was like this. He could not get into the pool because somebody would always get in there ahead of him right and Jesus walks up and tells him rise take up your bed and walk and he does it it's a miracle it's amazing it's exactly what this man has been waiting for but now watch this verse 10 the Jews therefore said unto him that was cured it is the Sabbath day it is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. Now see, these guys were something else. You know, Jesus had already said, you know, if you have a, a beast of burden that falls into a pit on the Sabbath day, 
You're not just going to leave him there until the next day. You're going to go in and get him out, you know? And, and so why shouldn't someone who needs healing be healed on the Sabbath? And Jesus said it over and over, but the, the, these people didn't pay no attention. They didn't listen. So they were telling this man, it is not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered them, he that made me whole, the same said unto me, take up your bed and walk. Now I want you guys to see something here today. Then asked they him, what man is that which said unto thee, take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. So this man didn't know who it was that had healed him. He didn't know his name, right? Because Jesus had already gone somewhere else. But it says in verse 14, Afterward Jesus findeth the man in the temple. And Jesus said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. You are healed. You've had a miracle. That thing that you've been waiting for for so many years, 38 years, is yours. Sin no more lest a worse thing come unto thee. So see, there was something wrong with this man's life. There was something wrong with his heart. Jesus healed him. But then he said, go and sin no more. Watch what this man does. Verse 15, the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. Now the Jews were Jesus' enemies. This man knew that. Look what happened in verse 16. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. So these guys came after Jesus even harder now because they knew that he was the one who had healed this man. See. This man caused Jesus unnecessary hardship because now Jesus had to deal with these Jews. Whereas if the man had just listened to Jesus and said nothing to the Jews, you know, and Jesus said, sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. So, you know, if if God has healed you, has given you a miracle, If God is dealing with you about something in your life to get rid of, get rid of it, please. Because you can lose that miracle, you see, by by disobedience and by hanging on to sin. Proverbs 28, 13 says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy you know the healing of the body is always an awesome miracle but pastor sean and pastor amy always say that an even greater miracle is the healing of the soul and the most important thing for you and me is whether our soul makes it to heaven And there may be many of you today that are watching the program. You're not saved. You've not asked Jesus to come into your heart. You have sin in your life that you need to get rid of. I have good news for you today. If you are hearing my voice, it is not too late for you. If you are watching this program, It is not too late. God is right here calling out to you. The Bible says, if today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Today is the day of salvation. So without any further ado, let's pray this prayer. Pray it after me. Father God, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he came to earth in human form 
and he died on the cross for all my sins. Right now, Lord, I ask that you come into my heart because not only did you die on the cross, you were put in a borrowed tomb, but on the third day, you rose from the dead so that I might live. And Lord, I ask you to come into my heart and into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. I turn my back on sin. I turn my back on the world, the flesh, and the devil. And I will follow you all the days of my life. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer today and you meant it with all your heart, then we want to welcome you into the family of God and congratulate you on the best decision you will ever make. You now belong to Jesus and you are going to be in heaven with him someday. And for those of you who are already saved, man, look, None of us are perfect. You know, none of us have arrived. God deals with all of us, you know, to, to, to get things out of our life and to make things right with Him. And I just want to pray with you guys today real quick. Those of you who are Christians, maybe there's something in your life God's been dealing with you about. Maybe you, you have sin in your life that you know that He doesn't like. Today is the day of repentance folks let's just pray father in the name of jesus i pray that those who are listening that our hearts have been softened lord towards you god as we feel the conviction of the holy spirit we realize that you did not come into the world to condemn the world but that the world through you might be saved and if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God, we repent of our sins today. We turn away from them and we forsake them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Listen, we want to give you an opportunity on this morning to support the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to do so. Visit us online at seanbinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanbinder.net. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. The ministry cash app address is the dollar sign, Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give non, you can also make non-cash donations to the ministry stocks, shares, crypto, Bitcoin, that type of stuff. You can visit us online at app, app .overflow .co forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also mail your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726 McKinney, Texas, 75070. Never forget, me and my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy, we love you. We appreciate you. We'll never take you for granted. See you again on tomorrow. God bless. Bye-bye.